Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now, before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes, which pieces we get. If black, I'll play Karukan. If white, I'll play the London system setup. So it's white, I'll play the London system setup. It starts with d4. Bishop comes on f4, unless the opponent plays e5 straight away. Uh, and then you can probably play e3, uh, trying to create a pyramid in the center. You can play next uh, c3 as well. But I'd like to develop the light square bishop first, trying to add the diagonal to where the opponent will castle probably. Okay, so opponent has played queen here, uh, trying to weaken up uh, the b6. Whenever you develop the bishop, uh, b, uh, the pawn gets weakened up because that was the ideal, the first piece which was being defended with the bishop. Now it's not. Uh, here I can develop the knight. One of the most can be this as well. Uh, I can castle maybe because I'll not be able to castle on the queen side this time. So let's castle on the king side. Opponent is getting on with the knight. Uh, a move like this might work out because if he takes, I can take back with the pawn or the bishop. In either way, it works. Probably taking with the pawn would be better. Uh, but what if he comes down? That's another problem. Um, I, I, sh I should take it maybe. Let's take it. We'll see what happens. Uh, I can now go with the knight. The idea of coming back to... Uh, c4 there, attacking the queen and then probably coming here as well in the next move. Uh, he's offering knight exchange, which of course we don't want. We're interested in the queen. Now let's see where the queen goes. Completely back. I can exchange the bishops maybe. Uh, that can be one option. Yes, I can. If he's willing to take, I'll take with the knight and the pawn is hanging there. If he doesn't take, I can still take or just keep the pressure like this if as long as possible. But he can probably tell up the knight as well instead. So we'll have to see what the open does. Okay, he's trying to move my knight away. I'll take the bishop first. Takes with the knight. Uh, I can come here attacking the pawn is one option or I go back and attack this pawn. Uh, most probably if I go back and attack, I'm expecting him to play f5 next, trying to defend the pawn. He doesn't, I can take now. I'm coming here again, if required. Not required for now. You can go on with the other knight now, trying to develop. Uh, exchanging is one option. Let's do that. Because after the exchange, our knight comes out with the tempo attacking the queen. If queen tries to threaten the knight, we can definitely get our queen active that defends the knight. Okay, he's trying to be a bit cheeky there. Uh, we can go here and stop him from doing anything. Uh, this makes more sense. He can take this pawn maybe. But he loses the bishop instead, so he has to safeguard the bishop first. And after he saves the bishop, we can play pawn forward, which saves everything. Even c4 is not bad. I can take with the pawn, get the rook active, and then attack. And once he moves, oh, he doesn't move the bishop because threats, 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 that gets a folk. If pawn forward, I have to just move my queen, nothing goes wrong. So, completely fine. I'll take one of the rooks now. Out of the game. Yes, he takes the pawn this time. Okay, I need this rook first. Takes with the king so that he can have a discover attack. Smart enough, but not 
good enough on this day because I'm getting my queen back trying to change, which he doesn't want. Um, how is pawn forward? Trying to ask him to take if he wants to, really. If he doesn't, then probably he'll play it forward. He takes. I can take as well. Now the pawn is weakened up here. He's giving that pawn for ah oh, checkmate. Mate threat. See, he's trying to be cute again, but doesn't work in real time. Takes the pawn. I can take with the queen or the rook. I'll take with the queen. I'm coming here with a check, and that's a fork as well. So he has to be aware of that threat. I'm attacking the rook, or the pawn with the rook as well as the queen. So lots of threats right now, and I don't think he can say everything. He doesn't. So check, and there goes the rook, and maybe he'll resign now. Because he has to go back only, and that gives a check. That loses the bishop. I like he's not resigning, but till when? If he moves the queen, he'll lose this pawn. If he doesn't, he'll lose this pawn. Uh, okay, which one should I take? No, sorry. The question is with what I should take. I'll take with the rook. Okay, that doesn't bother much. I can play pawn forward and stop his attack. I can exchange queens if required, but that's not really the need of the hour. But that simplifies stuff as well, so I can think of doing that. He resigns. As I said, it was not worth uh, playing from there on. But yes, you should always hang in there. You never know what, what comes next if the open blunders. I'm also human. I, I might blunder. I doubt to that level, though. OK, yeah, let's go with the uh, compute analysis once. Start off with d4, open and plays d5. I go with uh, knight, bishop to f4, open and plays c6. I go with e3, trying to solidify my center. It's important to take out the bishop first before closing the, uh, making the pawn chain, because otherwise the diagonal is blocked. And that's why the dark square bishop becomes a vulnerability for white. Uh, if you've tried to fianc or a bishop, it's already eyeing uh, your own pawn chain, so it won't be of much use. So I, taking uh, the bishop out of the pawn chain is always helpful. That's what I do. And then getting the bishop on d3, trying to eye the right side. Yes, uh, once the queen comes over here, you can definitely play b3. That's not weakening. Because even if he tries to get a check, you can simply save with the pawn, and he has to retrieve back. And once he goes back on the wrong side, you can even lose the bishop. Uh, so things can go wrong pretty quickly. If you go back, you have already lost tempo. You just move your bishop twice for no use, and you gave some good center control uh, to white already. And now I can go with the knight and develop my pieces further. So try to not repeat your pieces uh, in the initial part of the game. I went with knight f3, open plays uh, h6. I would say passive because he was worried about if bishop comes and pins the knight, but that's not a pin, so nothing to be bothered about. And since I have now opened up my other side of the board where I have played b3, I cannot cast from the queen side, which generally is the format in the London system, and you can attack from the king side. But here I had to just make sure that I consolidate my position and play uh, and I cast from the king side. Uh, as I said, play as per the need of the R, and that's what I did. Knight comes in, and it's probably annoying, so I just took it out. Uh, he takes with the pawn. Uh, I go with knight to e5. Computers were assisting a couple of moves. Both were pretty good. I can develop the other knight here, but I went with attacking the queen first. Queen goes back to d7, d8, the only possible square. Here, what was the right move? Developing the knight. Okay, but I went with bishop exchanging, bishop to d6. Uh, probably not a good idea, I would say, because uh, his bishop is not developed. Generally, uh, you should not like uh, try to... Uh, exchange pieces which are not developed by the opponent uh, so that it's already a passive move not letting him castle as well uh, so you can just try to keep that as on on the board as long as possible but still i went to for bishop exchange with the idea of knight comes on d6 if he takes and that can be deadly for example if he would have taken here uh, by mistake i can go here spoil his castling I can take the pawn as well with the knight, probably get my queen out, the other knight out as well, and the position looks pretty good for white. But instead, he doesn't uh, take and tries to kick my uh, knight away. I have to take the bishop first, 
that spoils his uh, so and he takes with the knight so that he doesn't spoil the castling and after you go there uh, yes there are a couple of moves uh, both the moves i have considered i was thinking of going here but then i was worried if he plays bishop here what's my next challenge what's my more active uh, place for knight to go from here it's nothing so i can just develop sim play some simple development moves like knight to c3 and, and trying to take this pawn out of, the, out of the equation that was the only way also the opponent can also uh, try maybe try to look uh, i say i played knight and opponent also plays knight to d7 trying to exchange knights uh, that is pretty good as well uh, yes i can take but the opponent can also take i take and then it's queen against queen he can he gets to castle and then probably i can exchange queen or keep them on board attack the uh, bishop instead so some uh, other lines can happen from here as well but in the game uh, he i got got the knight back he tries to make sure he is able to cast in the next move probably so just removing the knight out of the way by playing uh, knight d7 i take on the free pawn there and then i go with other knight development to d2 completing my minor pieces development now though i had castle earlier i can take the knight or i can go back uh, go to c5 i took the knight first uh, so that my queen my knight other knight comes out on them with the tempo attacking the queen uh, yes i was discussing this move as well in the game that queen can pin the knight uh, because the pawn is also hanging there uh, he tries to attack the knight i go with queen to f3 he plays bishop there uh, with the idea of uh, attacking my queen but then i went with knight to uh, c5 instead and he had to save the position there and that's where he blunders uh, he tries to move the other rook uh, and there comes the nasty folk even if he tries to save with the other rook uh, definitely we can just save our pawn first and as you see these both the rooks are doing nothing in the game uh, the bishop is also not doing anything knight is pretty stable there controlling all his pieces and now i have got active pieces which is queen i can have some center play as well i can get my rook active uh maybe look for queen exchange so that he is down to nothing basically so that's why white is an advantage uh, of 3.2 as per the computer in this situation let's go back to the game very blundered i just uh went with the folk uh yes the best move in the situation is to play pawn forward but then again you can just save queens and if he likes to trade which should not be the best move but it is because probably computer understood that there's no way forward after he takes i take back with either the pawns i have preferring with the f opening up uh, the uh, attack he has to save one of the rooks uh, that's what he can do best if he do go there i take the rook he has to take again maybe with rook uh, or maybe with the king that's what he did in the game as well uh, i can take this pawn he gets to take it uh, so this is completely winning for white i would say i had got uh, two rooks and he has got a rook and a bishop so and i have extra pawn as well so this is completely winning uh, no denying that so let's go back to the game where uh, he takes the pawn and i take the rook first he takes back and i bring my queen back uh, on d1 i ask him to exchange if he is willing to because i am ahead in the game he doesn't i play a4 he has to take he takes i take back with the rook attacking the pawn uh, and here the opponent plays uh, c5 instead and that was pretty much smart of him trying to go for a cheeky checkmate on g2 with queen and bishop both hang it so that was nice actually it can be missed sometimes because when you're in the flow of the game you generally don't see every every piece or what a pawn move is doing but that was pretty much uh, obvious because he played a pawn move where he could have saved his pawn and his bishop was not being attacked so he could have just got rook to a8 that was the more natural move maybe you could have played rook first and then try to do this bluff with me might might have work at that point of time but uh, instead he just uh, tries to uh, be toot i would say by playing pawn to c5 and that's pretty much visible that he's attacking and trying a uh, checkmate so i played pawn to f3 and there's no other option now for the opponent he has to take something he takes uh, the center pawn i take with the queen again as i mentioned a fork is coming from d7 also the a7 now cannot be defended even if rook comes here uh, i can take this as well 
uh, computer suggest king like you can first give a check and probably take this as well but either way it's fine and uh, i don't see uh, black winning from here on i gave a fork uh, he goes back only possible square i took the rook he goes up i take the bishop as well and then he tries to just proceed with the pawn and do something but i just played h3 and that was the end of the hope for my opponent i hope you like the video do let me know your feedback uh, if there is something to be learned from you or for you and you acknowledge that please do comment as well uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh, thank you so much for your time take care bye bye